So good evening, everybody. Today is March the, the 31st, so the last day in March of, 20, of the year 2020. And um, the topic tonight is called Power Source. And you're tuning into a new human experience. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So before I go into talking about what the, uh, the topic is tonight, the, the, the power source material, I actually want to um, start with playing a game or, or playing something with you. So just um, please play along. And what it's, it's very easy, no worries. You don't have to, you don't have to um, do anything. There's no video games. You don't have to um, do anything. Um, complicated at all. All you have to do is just um, give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to be fully tuning into your body. Leave all judgments aside. You know, no need to, to think at all. So no judgments, no thinking. Just use your body. Just allow your body to feel whatever it feels. And it's very simple. All I want to do is repeat a sentence to yourself, a sentence that I will say to you um, in, a, in a short while. So when you repeat that sentence, all I want you to do is just feel what your body's reaction is to that sentence. And, and it's not a yes or a no answer. So it's not, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. It's actually, everyone is in a continuum in between yes and in between no. Because some people may find that you are, you know, maybe somewhere, let's say 30% yes and 70% no. And some people may be, you know, be, um, maybe a little further along, on the no side, and some people may be further along on the yes side. So it's all a continuum. I'm not asking for a yes or a no. I'm asking for you to tell and just pay attention to your body. So if your body feels very relaxed and really um, like, like feel uh, like it's in a smile, then it's a yes. I would suggest that that would be a yes. But if you feel any contraction within your body, then more likely than not, there is a disagreement to this sentence. So are you guys ready? If you like, you can close your eyes. That may help you to tune into just using your body to feel because not everybody um, is used to tuning into their body. So I want you to all play along with this. So you just used your body. So here is the sentence that I want you to repeat to yourself. So the sentence is, I am the source of all power. So you don't have to say it out loud. You just have to repeat it silently to yourself. I am the source of all power. And just feel what you feel in your body. Does it feel... Does your body feel relaxed or is there some tension in your body? So just notice how your body reacts when you say this. Okay, good. So thank you very much for playing along. And I actually want you all to know that as far as I'm concerned, this sentence is true beyond all reasonable doubt that I am the source of all power and also each and every one of you are all source of all power not just some power but all power I know this it this may come as a surprise because in these days a lot of people are kind of living in fear Fear, so many questions are just preoccupying our mind. Am I going to get, catch the virus? Am I going to survive it if I catch it? Am I going to survive this economic shutdown? Am I going to have enough rent money? Am I going to have enough food? Is the government going to help us? 
Like, how long is this going to be? How come that person, you know, next door does not respect social distancing? How come people are still trying to come up to me and talk to me and try to touch me? You know, you know, I need to, how long do I have to wash my hands or clothes, whatever, all these questions. That is, um, it, at some point or other, floating up in our mind. And I want you to know that you may not believe me when I tell you that it is true, it is really, really true, that you all, each and every one of you, are the source of all power. Yes, you may doubt this in your doubt, and if you have any doubt, then it is a clue for yourself. Because we each are very powerful being. If we were not so powerful, then um, there really is no need to have so much interference in, in making sure that we don't know that we are powerful, making sure that we don't start to get back our power. We came to Earth long time ago, well, some people longer than others, but you know, some, we came to Earth to co-create with others to see what we can do together in this playground called Earth. And we have agreed before we come here to forget and also to give away our power. When we do that by, when we incarnate, we come with a small body as a baby. A baby that, you know, don't even know how to speak the language, we can't do anything for ourselves and that we have to be taken care of by our parents and our parents may or may not be there for us. And we, no matter what happened, we still cling on and rely on their love because that's, we, we, were, some, we were kind of thinking or met or led to believe that our survival and depends on whether they love us or not. And on the social scale, we need the government to protect us, to help us, tell, the, tell us what to do, tell us what not to do, all that. So all of this is really how we played. That's the playbook in two dimension and also in the inverted matrix in 3D, inverted 3D. However, it's 2020 and we are getting into fifth dimension. Not everybody chose to be in fifth dimension right now. Um, however, the intention of the whole human collective is to move into fifth dimension at around 2035. So we still, we, we have some you know, time to play around, still play in this, you know, not, not owning our power paradigm. But um, there are some part of uh, a few few of us, you know, a, a small portion of us that um, really choose to be in the fifth dimension. And in fifth dimension, the rules are different. In fifth dimension, we get to remember that we are the source of all power. We are source. Period. We are aspects of source, and we are alternate expression of the one or the source. And we are source of all power. So then how do we get back our power? How do we, even if we are, um, if we choose not to be going into 5D yet, we choose to play in 3D a little longer. However, even in the, the, the 3D environment, we are actually just um, fluctuating and going into three or five. So even though we may have chosen 3D, we still have the option to experience what 5D is like. We may fluctuate. Maybe we spend, let's say, 95% of the time in 3D. And 5% of the time, we flipped over to 5D. To, to just every now and then poke our head up to 5D and see what's going on. So all of us are doing that in various degrees. So then um, even in, in 3D though, 
because of the how I would say how because of how strong and positive the energy is and we actually earth is going it's already in the sector of the the galaxy where um really powerful waves of of high vibration energy is hitting us continuously pretty much if not every day at least you know every second or third day there's a new wave a new blast of high vibration energy that is hitting us so we actually those of us who have choose to be in 3d actually have to really do go the extra mile to to stay um to stay on uh, not as awake most of us are actually on some level waking up and some just takes a little longer so then how do we get back our power and being the power of all being the source of all power I actually have been um, really looking into this lately because so much is happening outside. It's like the whole, uh, I, I was mentioning to, to some of you who came in a little earlier, is that it is as though we have all been conscripted to play in this movie that is called The Great Pandemic or The Global Pandemic. Everything has been has been so distorted and played out of like it's like crazy we i'm at least i know um maybe some of you know that you know virus it's a virus yes it's a new virus and the the mortality rate is actually not that high is pretty much most most meaning more than half way more than half of people who get the virus survive it. It's only those people that are already weak and their immune system is, is so run down and they maybe you know, um, already have other illnesses that's impacting their health already. And then those are the people that are at high risk. Whereas for most of the other people, um, it's it's you really have to try pretty hard to die from that um, illness from that virus so it's it's not such a deadly virus however it's been played out in front of our eyes i mean in terms of virus it's actually way way less than the ebola ebola is really scary because when you look at how people die from ebola it's scary stuff. Whereas this is a flu. So basically is a, a new strain of flu that our immune system have not encountered yet. But then, but then knowing how robust our immune system actually is, is actually um, this, whatever we are seeing being played out, you know, shut down and all that, is actually overplay. When you see something like that happening, something that is so, um, I would say, it's, it's all blown out of proportion. You know that there is an agenda behind it. And uh, we don't know what the agenda is quite yet. I have some guesses, but you know, it's, it, we, we don't know what it is yet anyways. There are clues so that are being dropped. We know that there is an agenda behind it. However, I also know one thing. It does not matter what the agenda is, what the other people's agenda is, is that no matter what happened, everything only happens to us by agreement. There is no exception whatsoever, not even a virus. If you don't want to interact with someone, you can always find a way around it. If you don't want to interact with a virus, there is always a way to um, maneuver your way around it. So really let it sink in that we are the source of all power, that you are powerful. 
and start to look at ways to start to get back your own power and really understand that um, you're not this body. This, you know, I'm a baby, I need to be taking care of my, my parents and all that. That's just all an act. And when you know that that's really all just an act, then process all of that and start to and start to regain your own power and start to look at what it is that you fear who you fear and start to process that look at why you need love from your parents or anyone else why you fear rejection and look at all of those and even look at why you need money, why you fear money, and all the other emotions that may pop up as you think of, let's say, money or virus or love, all the different areas of your life. Ask yourself this question. Why do you fear? What do you fear? Whom do you fear? And start to process those. So what do you mean by process so i've talked about this um a while ago and i've repeated it a couple of times but i'm just going to give you a short version of what process is process the negative emotions is that any negative emotions that come up each sentence or question that you can think of is the thought form for example the the thought form of why do i need love that's a thought form. So when you ask yourself that question, really um, look at your body. Just allow your body to tell you where that thought form resides within your body. And then when, if something is in your body, it usually means that, that there is some unresolved energy patterns that's sitting in your body because if it's if there's if everything is resolved you can just listen to a sentence and it would not trigger you at all not even move a muscle at all but if you have any reaction to any thought form questions sentence belief whatever it is if you have a um if you have a sensation in your body then that means there is some unresolved emotions. And when you have unresolved emotions, all you have to do is allow that um, energy pattern to resolve itself. And it will resolve itself just by you holding that intention. Holding and like, and you holding the intention that you want to resolve that thought pattern, that energy pattern and allowing that to and have no judgment as to what may or may not happen if you need to um, cry then allow yourself to cry if you need to scream allow yourself to scream if you need to throw something um, at the wall and make sure you try not to uh, damage anything or anyone is if that's what you need to do then allow yourself to do that Allow yourself to hold both the, the, the energy pattern and your intention to resolve it. And when you do that, then the energy will resolve itself because your body knows how to transform energy. All you have to do is just allow it to do that. Most of the time, we don't allow to do it because we have um, a judgment against it. Judgment is like, for example... I mentioned that, you know, processing um, you needing your parents' love. So there is, if there is anything, uh, most of us think that, oh, we have to love our parents because they, you know, they, they gave us life and all that. And, you know, that's actually not true. They gave our body life. We, our body um, was kind of procreated through that process, but we are not our body. 
So we are actually just witnessing our body having that experience and all that. So process all of that power inequality when you are young, that you have to be obedient to your parents. Otherwise, there'll be consequences. So process all of that and allow yourself to feel whatever it is that, whatever feeling that comes up. Because the, the, the important thing is you actually created yourself. You, before you come on to earth, you co-created, you picked the parents. You um, picked the, the process, whether you incarnate through the normal process of going through the birth canal or you have a soul drop in whatever. So you actually have a choice. And you picked whatever choice that you have picked to come here. So you are actually in control all the time. And going through the birth canal and all that, that's just a story. It's like watching a movie. That's, it's a story. And if, you, if that story um, is your reason or excuse for handing your power over, then that's also your choice. So when you allow yourself to have different thoughts, for example, the thoughts that you are actually not your body, that's a big thought to hold. And I'm not saying that you have to have that thought. It's, you know, I believe that. That doesn't mean you have to believe it. And if you don't believe it, then you will have to resolve um, the, the, the power st structure some other ways. So the uh, processing is just to focus on a certain energy pattern because if you can think of the, the, the sentence, the words, or question, a thought pattern is kind of like a, um, kind of like a, a key that allows you to unlock certain things. And it will unlock those, th those sentence or that question is going to allow you to unlock that energy pattern. And then your intention is to go in and take whatever it is that's behind that um, thought pattern and allow that emotions, that energy pattern to resolve itself. It may take a while. It may take you know, a couple of hours, it may take a couple of days, a couple of weeks, who knows? You, um, you don't have to, you know, stay focused and, you know, don't eat or don't sleep. Just, you know, process a bit of, uh, a bit of it one day. And then when you think you, that's all you can do that today, then, you know, just say thank you and then go back to it the next day or you know the next week whenever you feel drawn to process some more or whenever you're ready to process some more then process some more at some point in time you will find that you have transformed that energy pattern so much so that even when you speak those words again i need love or i don't need no love whatever the the words whatever the sentence that trigger a response from you, when you get to the point where even when you repeat that sentence, someone else repeat that sentence to you, there is no more reaction. Then you know it's done. You're done with that. And I also want to mention that um, the reason why sometimes you may take longer to process something is because when you process all your own um, triggers or well, all your own emotions about it. You may be finished one day and you say, oh, that's good, finally. And then, you know, after a couple of weeks, when you go back to it again, you may feel that there's actually more. You get triggered again 
and you're kind of saying, what the heck? How come I thought I've done all of that? And I'm telling you that you may have done all your own work. However, you are actually connected to the collective. So there are many collectives that you are connected to. The, the most immediate one is your collective of your own family. That's a collective. So being connected to your ethnicity, the, the, where the, let's say, where you come from. For me, it's Chinese. And then for some people, the, the next level may be um, their belief system. Let's say if they're Buddhist, then all the, the beliefs about Buddhism. So all that. So we belong to different collectives. And we may have resolved something. Let's say if we have resolved the, the, the issue about us needing love. However, our collective may not have resolved that yet. So when we go out and interact with other people from uh, the collective that's around us, let's say from our family members who are still so needy about love, then all of that unresolved emotion, it may come up again. And we may decide to take on some of that so that we can resolve it on their behalf. Sometimes it may have been people that have actually, um, is from our lineage that has actually died a while ago, but because their unresolved emotions is still active in our DNA. In, our, um, in the history of our family. So when we have done our own work, then it is possible that the collective, the collectives, the many collectives that we belong to may um, still have some things that, that they want us to resolve on their behalf. For example, I actually, earlier this, this week, I was, um, well, I'm always working on, on transforming my relationship with my mom. And I still feel that there's still something I haven't gotten to it yet. So, so then um, this last week, I was sitting down and, and doing some of that work. And I go in there every now and then to, to see um, how much else I can do that. So when I actually go in and do more of the processing of my processing of my own, I find that actually after I process that, it kind of changed into the next level. The next level kind of showed up. And the next level was uh, what showed up was male female imbalance in my own family history and also at you know, on a social level as well, male-female imbalance. So that showed up. So I s continue on to transform the energy because that's just another energy pattern. And when I um, done that, so this is more the, over a couple of days, not talking about one sitting, the next level that came up was really about survival because the male-female imbalance and also survival is actually there is a link there. So then the um, the male the the survival anxiety came up. So I went on to transform that. So really getting into transforming the fear of death. So that's that's really an example of how when I start in with one thing. And transform it the next layer comes up and then the next layer comes up so that is what may happen i'm not saying that it will always be so much layered however um it is possible so that's really how we can regain our own power is really by going in to do do the work do the work is to transform all the incongruence that we feel in our body. So if you feel some sort of fear, then don't step over it. Take the time to transform it, especially now that, you know, you don't really have anything else to do. <laughs> so might as well go in and do that work so that when everything is uh, has been resolved and we can go out 
and um, continue our life, you actually can go out and with a much lighter heart and much cleaner energy and be able to, to connect with all that new possibilities even faster. And so um, that's really all I would like to say about uh, what power source is because we are actually all a source of all power. And I don't know if you all have noticed that there is this picture um, that I've selected. It is, a, it is actually a sigil. So what is a sigil? A sigil is really a, uh, a pictorial spell. And this is from Enelia Benz. And I, she posted that this sigil, this, this um, pattern on Facebook and I am, and I really resonated with it and I really liked it. So what she, what she wanted to do with this sigil is really the, the words that are associated with this sigil is, is to remove the veil of forgetfulness from myself and all beings who were born on earth to embody and co-create the high frequency paradigm experience now. So this is what, what's the, the words or thought form behind this sigil. So when I look at it and I started playing around with this sigil, playing meaning, you know, um, when I meditate, I would just bring this sigil into my heart and just think of this sigil. And I actually do feel it made a difference and I really enjoyed it. That's why I selected this sigil to be the um, kind of the poster for our topic this evening, power source. And I actually would like to um, use this sigil for our meditation this evening. <laughs> 